Cool. So we'll start off in talking about um, induced voltages and inductance, talking about what we term magnetic flux. And pretty much this is exactly analogous to what you guys learned as electric flux back in the day when you guys studied Gauss's law back in like chapter 14. Anybody remind me what the definition for electric flux was? You guys recall this lovely symbol with an E. We're now going to have the same symbol with a B for magnetic flux. Anybody remember? I dealt with electric field lines going through so either a, uh, through a plane or through an enclosed surface in terms of Gauss's law and stuff like that. So, but it was Ea cosine theta, it also equaled Q over epsilon naught. So, but the magnetic flux is analogous to this guy, and we define it exactly the same way. So, and it's Ba cosine theta. So, and one thing to note, if I have, let's say a bunch of magnetic field lines pointing towards the right, then I would want, in this case, my surface here. So how do I want to orient this thing to get the maximum number of field lines passing through the surface? Yeah, I want the plane of my lovely surface here to be perpendicular to the field here. And so in this case, it turns out that's how they define cosine theta here. Theta is the angle relative to the normal, to the perpendicular relative to our field here. So in this case, if I have this lovely surface exactly perpendicular to these field lines pointing to the right, that's when theta would equal zero. And what's the cosine of zero? One. And so essentially, you'd just be left with, with BA. And so the maximum your magnetic flux here is going to reach is B times A. And that's when you're, the plane of your surface is exactly perpendicular to your magnetic field. <clears throat> cool. And it's just a term we term magnetic flux. And the big importance uh, to this here is that we'll find out uh, if you have a changing magnetic flux, you can get an induced voltage in something. So it turns out, uh, let's say we take a closed loop. We take this lovely closed loop. It turns out if I hit this thing with a magnetic field, preferably perpendicular to it. So if I alternate that, you know, the, the strength of that magnetic field, so either raise it or lower it, I can actually cause a current so to start traveling one way or the other through this lovely loop, depending on which way the magnetic field points and if I'm increasing it or decreasing it. So and this is what Mr. Faraday discovered way back in the day. So and he actually quantified how this would work. And then Lenz's law kind of allows us to go through and talk about what direction that current's going to go in this loop and stuff like that. But notice there's no battery in this loop. There's no source of EMF. So but we can use a magnetic field to induce this to have an EMF, and being a complete circuit, it will induce a current. And so we talk about induced EMFs, or induced voltages, and induced currents. So in this case, if you look at Faraday's law, So Faraday's law here looks at, uh, we'll talk about the negative in a sec, but uh, you could have a single loop of wire or you could have many turns and that factors in. The more turns you have, the greater the induced EMF is gonna be. So, but, and then it's times the change in flux over the change in time, specifically again, magnetic flux in this chapter. And so you gotta have a changing flux. It's not enough just to have a flux, it has to be changing. And so there are three parts to this magnetic flux. There's the magnetic field. So that's what Faraday first observed, is if you change the strength of the magnetic field, you'll have a changing magnetic flux. And having a changing magnetic flux in that fashion will get you an induced EMF. So, but what else could I change besides the strength of the magnetic field? Yeah, I could somehow change the area of the loop. And so in this case, you know, I could make my loop smaller or bigger if, you know, maybe it's got some elasticity associated with it or something like that. So, and that would also result in a changing magnetic flux and an induced EMF. What else could I change? I could change the angle theta. So if I start rotating the loop or something like that, the angle theta would be changing and that would also lead to a changing magnetic flux and an induced EMF. Question. So the angle is between the magnetic field and the area? So the angle is between the normal to the magnetic field and the plane of the loop. So in this case, the normal would be coming straight out of the board here. So the magnetic field points this way, the normal's perfectly straight out of the board. But wouldn't the, the theta be 90? Well, again, the angle is not relative to the magnetic field, but relative to this normal of the magnetic field. So the angle's with respect to this 
you know, plane coming out of the board. So if I have this guy perfectly parallel with this plane coming out of the board, it's 90 to the magnetic field, you're right, but it's zero degrees away from the normal. So the theta here is not relative to the magnetic field, but relative to the normal from the magnetic field. So if you notice, it's actually defined that way on your sheet as well. So theta is the, the angle from the normal, not from the magnetic field itself. So we saw this when we dealt with the torque on a current carrying loop, same kind of way we define theta there as well. Cool. So one thing to keep in mind, you, it's not enough to have a flux, you've got to have a changing flux, and you can change that again in three main ways. Change the max strength of the magnetic field, change the area of your loops, or change the angle at which we're doing that. So we'll find out that changing the angle is a great way to set up a generator, like an alternating current generator. So your negative sign here refers to direction. So when you report your induced EMF, you're never actually going to report it as a negative value. So you're usually going to give the absolute value, but the negative here refers to direction. We'll find out that Lenz's law is going to talk about the direction of the current induced in your loop. Which direction is, is that it's going to oppose the change in your magnetic flux. So if, your magnetic, if the change in your magnetic flux points one way, then the current's going to induce one way or the other, where it generates its own magnetic flux opposing that change in flux. We'll define that better in a little bit. It's a little confusing when you first see it. It's even more confusing the second time you see it, but the third time you see it, it starts to make sense. If you're confused, you're right where you should be.